everybody, Kelly Engineering here, and welcome to episode 4 of Sky Factory 4. In between episodes, I did all of this. This is the uh, work of the entirety of Friday night and the entirety of Saturday. I, <laughs> I had to get a lot of sand, had to get a lot of mineral, had to get a lot of bricks. It was an absolute nightmare for something that honestly I can't stand the look of. It took quite a while to uh, place all of these bricks and then put lava all around it. It was an absolute nightmare. But uh, I also made this scaffolding up, and uh, this is just replaceable scaffolding from Cyclic. It's made entirely out of sticks, unless you're using the redstone version right here, or this responsive scaffolding, which is sticks and a piece of redstone. So this is very handy stuff because... Um, yeah, it just places and it breaks immediately. It's absolutely astounding. So you just saw that I just climbed it like a ladder, but trying to go down it, you fall immediately. Unless you actually have to hold, ship, hold shift and hold up in order to descend slowly. If I let go of up, I free fall. So yeah, just be aware of the uh, scaffolding. Oh, another thing about the scaffolding and... What the heck, I'll just take this brick. So, this normal scaffolding right here is called replaceable scaffolding. And that's because after you place it, all you have to do is just click it with the block. And the block gets placed there immediately, and I get the scaffolding back. What's going on with the responsive scaffolding is if you have multiple responsive scaffolding in a row, like say this 10 block area was uh, nothing but responsive scaffolding. All you have to do is break one of them and any other connected replaceable sca uh, responsive scaffolding will break with it. So it's very handy. It's uh, I love the scaffolding. I love Cyclic for adding the scaffolding. But uh, this is the other thing that I've done. I moved all of my trees over and then connected it to my storage network over here. Boop. So now everything that is in this uh, these filing cabinets and then these two compact chests, which are max size compact chests, are also connected to the storage request or the storage network. We've got everything all here. It's wonderful. I also made a bunch of more porcelain uh, porcelain melters because I don't have access to the smeltery until I uh, get six prestige points, which is so terrible. But all of the uh, oh. Another thing, it's a very good learning point. So, attached to these porcelain casting basins, I have storage import cables. The storage import cables work just like AE2 import cables, where in order for an item to actually be pulled into the network, it has to be in its buffer. So, this is just a filter showing blocks of tin, blocks of iron, and blocks of gold. And uh, that means that once a one of those blocks enters the porcelain casting basin, it'll automatically get put into the uh, lowest priority chest that has room for it. So this is a priority two and this is priority three, mainly because after it makes everything, I just take it out, throw it in here, and this is where I keep all of my blocks. Another very weird thing about it is uh, the fact that I don't have lead in here, but lead automatically comes out when I put in the block of tin. So you know what that probably is? Thermal does a lot of similar Block of tin is thermal foundation. Let's see here. Thermal foundation storage. The heck does that mean? I've never seen that before. Yeah, so it doesn't uh it doesn't care about the metadata. It just goes for it automatically. So putting in the uh block of tin that was right in here, and obviously the tin's out so the lead isn't leaving. So let's get that block of tin back. So because the item ID is the exact same, sans the metadata, so this is one and the lead is probably, yeah, three. So since it's the same item ID, all you have to do is just put in one of the thermal foundation stuff and it'll get exported normally. It should be worth noting that if you select or dictionary and meta, then you can actually place the block of lead in there, no problem. But with the or dictionary and meta off, then the block of tin is all that's required in order for the uh, block of lead to get exported. Now, obviously, this part is not done. However, I uh, set up these little square rectangles, and you can see that actually part of it goes a little bit over the uh, over the void. But these are going to be towers in each of the cardinal directions 
of the uh, of where the main tower is going to be. So these are going to be square towers. It's going to look real nice. And then I have in the uh, whoop, zoom out. Then I have in all directions smaller squares. And I actually think in order to uh, maintain a look I want, I'm actually going to expand these out a little bit. Uh, this is uh, the tower as it stands right now. This is just going to be my tree stuff. I don't know what I'm going to do here. And this is, uh, I don't know what's going to go north either. But the entrance is right here in the south end. Uh, uh, that's future plans because I do not have the materials I want. Mainly quartz and marble. So this is going to be a uh, black and white. And <laughs> eventually once I have all of the marble necessary for that, I'm going to have to replace all of these stone bricks too. But luckily there is a replace wand in here. So, yeah, there's uh, exchange scepters from Cyclic. There's no problem with that. In order to clear out the uh, massive amount of forest and the massive amount of dirt, I actually created this uh, lumber axe and this iron shovel. And these are not things that you can craft just willy-nilly with a normal uh, tool station. You need the tool forge, which is, made from, uh, which is made from any sort of metal block. And what the... Tool Forge allows you to do is actually make upgraded versions of the pickaxe, which is a hammer, the shovel, and the axe. So I made those, and actually, I think my lumber axe. No, it, my lumber axe didn't level up, but my excavator did. Yeah, my excavator now has more modifiers, so it was uh, quite a bit of clearing out of stuff in order to make this happen. But uh, like I said, it was the entirety of Friday night and Saturday setting all this up for you guys. In this episode, what we're going to be doing is uh, actually Vicecraft, because I have not messed with Vicecraft since I think F Fullcraft 1. And uh, even then, I didn't really get into it. And wow, that is a very small GUI. Oh, I do not want to do this. Oh, it's so nasty looking. All right. <laughs> so... Yeah, this is the Vicecraft manual, and uh, all it takes is just making a bunch of workbenches, it looks like. Oh, wow, this has changed since 1.10. Oh, no. All right, well, I'm going to uh, go ahead and get all of this stuff together and uh, in the process figure out what each of it, what all of it does, and uh, then explain it to you. Oh, wow, that's something. Um, apparently in the auto... <laughs> In the auto gooey size, I can't actually see inside my chests. Ah, that's much better. Alright, well, uh, yeah, keep that in mind if that ever happens again. So the first thing that I'm going to need are these logic chips. And I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to make six of them. And then after you have the logic chi uh, chip, you have to make a workbench. So, workbench. Boom. And combine those in here, and I have the airship workbench. So place the airship workbench down. I uh, I'm running out of <laughs> running out of space. So put the workbench down, and wow, that is really freaky looking. Why don't I remember any of this? All right, well I have the airship workbench, and the airship workbench is uh, it ho oh wow, that's really cool. I don't recall that either. But the airship workbench uh, holds and then displays each of the items that are inside it. And the next thing that we're going to have to create is a balloon. Alright, so we're going to make the balloon. We're going to make the engine. And the engine is actually a different recipe than what's displayed in the book. So it looks like the uh, engine requires uh, one of the circuit cards. But the engine just requires a block of redstone here. So, uh, lucky us. Airship engine, and then the airship frame. Awesome. So I have all items I need for Vicecraft. And we're going to start... We're going to uh, go ahead and make our first airship. Before that, though, we uh, I need to make the actual core of the airship. The uh, most important part. So what I have done is I have made some cow seeds. And cow seeds are... Uh, well, it looks like I'm out of leather now, but I've already made three. And that is just a piece of wheat, seeds, and a piece of leather. Or alternatively, you can go to the Farming for Blockheads market, type in cow seeds, and for 16 raw corn, you can buy a seed. So these mob seeds are actually really, really cool. I'm going to go out here and I'm going to plant them. 
So it's kind of hard to see right now, but uh, yeah, these cow seeds eventually will grow into uh, baby cows. And they can be sped up with bone meal. I'm going to grab some bone meal. Oh, actually, you can kind of see it growing already. I haven't even placed a piece of bone meal yet. But uh, yeah, these cows. Boom, got a baby cow. Awesome, three baby cows. So I'm going to wait for these to grow up, or alternatively, I could go get some seeds. And uh, if you feed these things seeds, it will cut down the amount of time required for growing. But uh, I'm going to let them grow naturally, because I have one more thing that I need to create. What I need to create is this mechanical drying basin. And the mechanical drying basin will allow me to throw in some lava. And, uh, well, yeah, throw in some lava, and I can create a magma block. A magma block being what I need to make the airship core, the only thing left. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I threw a piece of coal inside this squeezer, and just gonna jump on it. There we go, and get a piece of pulverized coal. Put that in there, and I have the regular drying basin. And the regular drying basin recipes do not have this lava into, uh... Lava into magma block. Eh, that's unfortunate, but I uh, now that I have this, all I have to do is make obsidian and then these energy batteries. The energy batteries being no issue whatsoever. I have plenty of crystallized mineral chunks from my boop one two from my mineral sapling that I have going. So one. Oh, that was a mistake. One two. And here we go, two energy batteries. And with that, what am I missing? Oh, the obsidian. All right, I'm going to go make the obsidian and then we'll craft this up. So I wasn't planning on busting into integrated dynamics today, but uh, it looks like I'm going to have to, unfortunately. So uh, I have all this set up right now, but I can't actually import from the energy battery into the mechanical drying basin right now because I need to uh, go through quite a little crafting bit. So what I've done right now is I've created some uh, destabilized redstone. And do I have a bucket? Yes, I do. What I'm going to do is take a bucket of this, place it in a cauldron, and then dip a blue slime sapling in it, and I'll get a purple slime sapling. I'm going to go plant this up and get me some purple slime. All right, now that we have some purple slime and a bucket of milk from my grown-up cow, I'm going to throw that in the cauldron, throw there, and get an apple. And when you throw an apple in here, Got a piece of chorus fruit. Awesome. After you have the chorus fruit, pop it into the uh, manual squeezer, jump on it, and it's not going to give you anything. All right. But it does have a little bit of liquid in there. So uh, after about uh, eight or nine popped chorus fruit goes in there, you're going to have enough for a bucket of uh, <laughs> a bucket of liquid crystallized chorus. So, I need to jump on that one more time. Boom. There we go. So, it, uh, <laughs> I needed to jump on it one more time in order to work, but it's fine. So, I'm going to keep doing this until I have enough buckets, or enough for a bucket of crystallized chorus. I'm going to make a crystallized chorus block. I didn't realize that I had to, uh, that if there was any bit of liquid at the bottom of this, then it won't actually allow you to squeeze anything else. So what I did is I made another drying basin right now. Uh, I made another drying basin and made this grindstone from horsepower. Uh, put a piece of coal on it, hold right click, and uh, it'll give you the pulverized coal you need. It's, uh, it's a process. I'll go over that in a later episode. Horsepower is... <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. In any case, I put this drying basin next to it because if there's a drying basin next to a squeezer with liquid in it, the liquid will automatically, with uh, no player interaction needed, just go right into the drying basin. So I'm going to continue squeezing out all of this popped chorus fruit until I have a full block of the crystallized stuff. And there we go. You can actually see that it is uh, starting to dry. So... Oh man, that's excellent. Once I have this, uh, once I have this dried, I'm immediately going to turn it into its actual crystals. The crystals are what I need in order to make the uh, logic directors and then make these actual world interfaces. So these, uh, these world interfaces are what I need to actually take energy from the energy battery or from wherever and then put it into where I want it to go. 
So it's uh it's quite a process, but I am going to make those uh I'm gonna make that world battery, connect this up, and then I'll finally have the mechanical drying basin and we we can move on. And there we go, my mechanical drying basin now has RF going to it. So oh why did I even in any case. So what I have here is an energy importer connected to the energy battery. And yep, it's still holding steady. And then I have the regular energy interface attached to the mechanical drying basin. I apologize for the rain. I don't know, th this is a very rainy world. So uh, once it turns nighttime, I'm gonna get rid of it immediately. In any case, I have power going here. I got rid of my bucket for some weird reason. And uh, I didn't even have to make this world energy importer. So everything I did with those, uh, with those crystals uh, useless. Didn't need to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some uh, lava, put it inside the mechanical drying basin. Whoops. And you can see that it is starting to do its work. Boom. That was very quick. But I have my one magma block, which is what I needed. Oh, these, I didn't go over the basic fluid tanks for mechanism. I crafted these up and uh, it's a very simple recipe. It's just iron and uh, iron and redstone. No problem. It holds 16 bucks. Oh, 14 buckets my mistake and uh yeah it's very simple i made four of them when i was making this monstrosity and just <laughs> yeah doing everything in my power to uh limit the amount of trips i would have to make for lava so but yeah i made uh four of these and now well, only one is lava one is redstone one is milk and one's water in any case i have my one magma block let's make our vice craft stuff here we are we have that airship core so, going to go over here, I have, yep, I have everything in here. So all I have to do is place this down, the balloon on top, the basket. I guess I am missing something, what am I missing? Oh, I need to make two engines, okay, and some leads. Alright, no problem, no problem. And here we are, here is our very first... Vicecraft ship, so I'm gonna shift right click. I just threw it out and Here is my airship What a janky janky thing so right click and I am now inside it and in here you see that you have a uh, Little a little oh whoops little interface going on. Oh <laughs> Whoops, I uh, I have to Go through some controls real quick. I'll be right back with you All right, I have uh, redone my control so now I can actually control the uh <laughs> control the airship and by opening G I'll open up a little uh, a little GUI so the most important one right now is fuel this is where I uh, input all of my fuel and it can accept redstone apparently it cannot accept redstone it should have been able to accept redstone regardless that's why I brought this charcoal here so I can make visaline pellets so I have 16 visaline pellets and the visaline pellets will definitely be taken awesome so you got to be careful how much fuel you put in this thing because it will always burn the fuel. It's uh, unfortunate. Oh yeah, see redstone. It can take redstone. Alright. So all of these are just upgrade slots. I'm not going to go over those this episode, but I am definitely going to... <laughs> because it's a very... Because it's just a tier 1 airship, it... It's not very fuel efficient, so I'm going to leave the vice pellets out of it for now and just go over here at the top. I'm, uh, you can see that, oh wow, I'm really at, uh, I really can't do anything with this thing right now, even if it was fueled. So there are two numbers up at the top there. Let me mess with the video settings again. You see that 121 that's in red? The 121 is my current altitude. And then the 75 is the maximum altitude that this airship will allow. Uh, it's uh, pretty unfortunate, but I can't actually fly this thing right now since I am up too high. I'm going to have to upgrade it a couple more times. And then obviously no fuel means that there's no fuel inside the, uh, inside the airship to get it running. That top longer bar is... Uh, how much fuel total is stored in the airship and then the bottom bar is how much fuel it is currently using so it's a little bit confusing and then that middle black square box is the module that goes inside there are a whole bunch of different modules let me type in vicecraft 
the most popular one being like the bombing module. So lesser speed, greater altitude, all of that good stuff. And then you have these uh, upgrades. I'm uh, actually going to upgrade this to a tier two since I believe I have the uh, every aspect of this to a tier two before I end out this episode because I actually want to be able to uh, fly around in this thing. Now to upgrade your airship, you, uh, you're you going to need some special items depending on what module you want to upgrade. So for the core, you need core shards, you know, frame casings, engine fragments, balloon remnants. In order to, uh, th those are the four modules that can be upgraded. So I've gone ahead and made 16 core shards because uh, I actually have the items in order to go up to the core upgrade tier 3. Obviously I don't have emeralds yet, I haven't made the emerald sapling. But with those core shards, core upgrade tier 1, what is it missing? Oh, another airship core. So I'm going to make some more uh, magma blocks and uh, make each of these, but in the meantime... All you have to do to upgrade your airship is when you're inside it, press whatever you've keybound opening up the GUI to and go to upgrade. And over here in the core, you put this in here, it knows that it's good for an upgrade, and you hit the button. And now that I have a uh, base bonus of 100, my core is upgraded to tier 1. And down here, you'll see that this is the core that I have installed. Oh, I've also renamed the uh, the airship as well. So uh, right now it is named Kelbodia. So over here in the customize menu, you can change the name of your airship, and you can change the uh, what the airship actually looks like. But that costs redstone in order to do. This is a new mechanic to me, and uh, why I was thinking that we needed the redstone in the first place. So once you put redstone in here, any aspect that you want to customize, you uh, you're more than willing to. So yeah, studded, look at that. But it costs 100 redstone in order to do that. So I am not going to do that. I don't have the redstone for that right now. But I did change the name and it cost 10 redstone in order to change the name to Kelbodia. So be wary of that. All right, here we are. So I have created the tier two and tier three upgrade for the core and the actual base of it. I have not made the engine upgrade and I have not made the balloon upgrade mainly because I need blaze rods in order to craft these engine fragments and I need lots of leather in order to craft the balloon remnants and yeah so I need lots of leather for that so I'm going to uh, hold off on those for now but I am going to upgrade the core and I don't know if I said this before but you see redstone balance 200 I'm going to put in the tier 3 upgrade that and now my redstone balance is 300. The core upgrades how much redstone can actually be stored inside the uh, inside the airship. And then, oh, I'll go back to the upgrade menu. And you can tell that information just by shifting over each of the upgrades. So make an airship move faster. And each uh, each tier also unlocks new frame skins. But whatever. This is essentially going to be useless to me until I get balloon upgrades and engine upgrades. Balloons help my altitude. And if I want to get up to that island right there, which I've been jonesing to do, I need more balloons. But in the meantime, I do have... Oh, and uh, the engine upgrade also makes this more fuel efficient, so I desperately need that. Otherwise, I'll just be blowing through uh, charcoal and redstone. But with that, I'm uh, going to call this an episode. Sorry I didn't uh, manage to complete the entirety of Vicecraft, but uh, I am running very short on time and I have another business trip I need to go on. Uh, luckily this one is much shorter than before, it's only going to be one or two days. So, I am Kelly Engineering, I hope that you enjoyed the episode, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye